Most people think of the Sony ZV-E10 as solely a video camera. I mean, it's marketed as a vlog camera. Hell, it doesn't even have a viewfinder. But it does have photo mode. And it does share the same sensor as the A6400. And it's just so dang small. Personally, I bought this camera to do video work as well. Sony's marketing worked. But ever since I had it, I've been interested to see what the photos look like that come out of this camera. Truthfully, as someone who is photo first, I love the viewfinder experience, and I'm not a huge fan of photo sessions without it. Recently, I had the perfect opportunity to test out photo mode and hybrid shooting while my wife got her latest tattoo. So while you're reviewing that footage, let's go through some of the things I liked and disliked about this photo experience, and I'll give you my conclusion at the end of the video. Let's start with the things that I enjoyed about this experience. Number one, the size. Part of the reason I picked up this camera was because of the size. When we think about cameras that fall into the everyday carry category, most of them are actually pretty small. The average person who's gonna choose a camera, not necessarily the camera folks, those people are gonna go for a smaller camera, something that lends itself to be more of a point and shoot. If for some reason they desire the interchangeable lenses, yes you, then you're gonna be looking for something smaller because most people don't wanna lug around a big, heavy camera. When it comes to documenting everyday life, personally, I leave my Sony 16 millimeter F2.8 lens on this camera. It's a pancake lens, and man, it makes this whole form factor super duper small. This setup can easily fit in my pocket. When I think about people who prefer to bring the Fuji X100 series cameras with them, most of them say that it is because of the size and the JPEGs. Number two, the option of silent shooting. A lot of people may overlook this feature, but it is actually one of my favorites that are on modern cameras. And the ability to take photos in silent mode is a huge winner in my book. I was taking photos of my wife getting this tattoo, and after two to three minutes, I decided to switch into silent shooting mode. I knew that I was gonna be taking a ton of photos during the session, and I did not want to annoy everyone with the click, click noise that the shutter makes. Silent shooting comes in clutch in so many different scenarios, and I was able to test it out in this one. Normally, when you put the camera into silent shooting mode, you're relying on the electronic shutter, and this can introduce something called banding into your photos. It's basically where you see these bands uh, of light or darkness, and it's basically the camera sensor conflicting with the light in the room. Most people really try to avoid banding, myself included, but if it's a situation where you really need to be silent when you're shooting, it's a problem I'm willing to work with and a sacrifice I'm willing to make in order to continue taking the shots. Number three, the quality. I mentioned it earlier, but this camera shares the same sensor as the Sony A6400. That means it's a 24 megapixel sensor, and 24 megapixels is way more than enough to be shooting for social media. The other bonus that a lot of people will gloss over is that this camera allows you to shoot RAW plus JPEG. I know that many modern cameras allow you to do this, and it's not new technology, but it is something I look for in a photo camera. For people who aren't camera nerds, this basically means that you're able to shoot two files at the same time. A raw file, which will give you a lot of data in the event that you wanna edit your photos, you won't be breaking them or they won't look really messed up. And a JPEG, which is something that most people are familiar with. If you do decide to edit a JPEG, you won't be able to edit it as much, but truthfully, if you play around with the settings in camera, you can get the JPEGs on some of these modern Sony cameras to look relatively nice. If you're enjoying this video so far, consider giving it a thumbs up. Now let's move on to some of the things I really didn't care for during this photo experience. Number one, no viewfinder. I said this at the start, but I absolutely love shooting with my viewfinder. It eliminates that weird glare by looking at the screen, 
It allows me to learn the camera more because with your eye pressed up against the eye cup, you have to learn the controls on the back of the camera relatively quickly in order to change your settings. Using the viewfinder also helped me to avoid what we call chimping, immediately checking your photos after you take them. While the lack of a viewfinder didn't hinder me during this experience, I definitely missed it and wished that I had it during this experience. Number two, battery life. I absolutely love how small this camera setup is. It truly is amazing. But I really don't like that it's using these older, smaller batteries. This camera takes the older Sony NP-FW50 batteries, which if you know anything about Sony cameras, do not hold a charge at all. I repeatedly found myself turning the camera off in between times when I wasn't actively using it to conserve battery. Now, side note, I was also shooting video during this session, but the fact that a one hour tattoo session took my battery from 100% all the way down to about 10% is completely not acceptable. Whenever I'm taking this camera out for the day, I'd normally carry two to three extra batteries with me just so that I can get through the entire day. Number three, mode switching. So I know this video is about photo and about photography, but I was hybrid shooting during this session. And one of the things that really messed me up a little bit is the lack of a mode dial. All of my other Sony cameras have mode dials. Even my Canon G7X Mark III has a mode dial for easy switching between photo and video mode. This camera, on the other hand, has a button that switches between the modes. If you're planning to hybrid shoot with this camera, pay attention because when you go from photo mode to video mode and you wanna go back to photo mode, you need to press the button two times. Pressing once from video mode takes you from regular mode to S and Q mode, which is your slow motion. My final thoughts. So I've been sharing photos from this session throughout this entire video, and I wanna pass the question on to you. What do you think of these photos? Are they acceptable? As for me, I think this camera does quite all right. Now, it's not gonna be replacing my Sony a7 III anytime soon. Hell, it's not even gonna replace my Sony a6500, but it has already replaced my Canon G7X Mark III. The images that come out of this camera are quite decent. I feel more than comfortable sharing these images on social media, and I even could see myself using this for a smaller content shoot or smaller paid gig. The 24 megapixel sensor gives me more than enough room to crop if I need to. I also have enough lenses to create the type of image and look that I'm going for. And I've been working with Sony images for a while, so I feel confident in being able to manipulate the color to get exactly what I want. If you're primarily a photographer, truthfully, I would not recommend this camera. Um, go pick up something else like the Sony a6700, or if you're on the used market, the a6400, a6500, uh, something. If you're in this like APS-C realm, one of those cameras will do you a lot better. But if you're someone who is considering being a little bit of hybrid and you don't mind the lack of a viewfinder or the lack of a built-in flash, then maybe pick up this camera and give it a try. That's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, consider giving it a thumbs up and hitting the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.